Hello and thanks for staying with us on Africa Independent Television, AIT. Welcome to Democracy Today. I am Ijoma Osamu. Yes, there are 93 days, or you can call it three months, which is about 13 weeks to February 16, 2019, the day scheduled for the presidential election in Nigeria. On Sunday, 18th November 2018, INEC will give green light for political campaigns to start ahead of the 2019 general elections. And in Nigeria today, if you pick up any dailies, all you get are stories related to political controversies. Uh, if it is not defection, it is attacks on opponents or impeachment threats. Since last Friday, the issue of impeachment in Ondo and most uh, uh, Nigerian assemblies has uh, become a cash one in the media. Yes, Ondo and Anambra State. Yesterday was for Anambra. On Friday, the Speaker of uh, the Ondo State House of Assembly, Bamidele Oleogun, I think I got that name, was reported to have uh, been impeached and replaced by Olamide George and Abimbola Fajolu as deputy. In Anambra on Tuesday, the Speaker, Rita Maduagu, was said to have been impeached by 20 out of the 30 members of the Assembly on alleg allegations bordering on financial impropriety, gross misconduct, and sundry allegation. Honorable Kim Uzuezi, representing Aguata to set constituency, was said to have moved the motion for the impeachment of the Speaker, while Honorable Onye Buchiofo seconded the motion. And the lawmaker also suspended three members of the House, uh, appointed Honorable Nkem Uzueze as the new Speaker. This is the first part of our touring issue that we'll be discussing anyway. The issues that we'll be taking today uh, is uh, focusing on the impeachment in the two state houses of assembly. Um, but first of all, we'll have to go to Anambra, where uh, the, I don't want to call her embattled speaker, but uh, the, she, stays, she still remains the speaker of the house because uh, our impeachment didn't follow due process. Let's listen to her. Um, for you to impeach the speaker or the governor, you need to third of the house, and they do not have it to third. And there was no impeachment offense read. I was only getting ready to go downstairs for plenary session and um, all of a sudden I heard that the deputy speaker moved down purportedly to, to sit. But um, because uh, none, none of the members, they don't have the quorum, they just couldn't do anything. It was foiled. They tried to, but they just couldn't. And that was just what happened. I was getting ready to go down for plenary session for them to do that kind of kangaroo impeachment. And that's not impeachment. It's not known in any law. They need to talk to be able to impeach me or the governor. And here, right here, we are, we are 16 plus, yes, plus uh, three outside. We are 16 in numbers. So where did, did they get it to talk? Where? And what offense did I commit? So what can, there's no process known in law you know, of impeachment that they have uh, carried out to it. But that's the lady, Rita, who was uh, said to have been impeached with report yesterday afternoon. And uh, let's go to uh, Anambra this afternoon while we'll talk with uh, uh, the reported new speaker, Nkem Uzweze. Hello, Mr. Uzweze. Yeah, hello. Good evening, dear. Thank My name is Nkem Uzweze. Thank you very much for, for joining us and being a part of the program. Now, let's we just listened to uh, the embattled speaker. She said um, she remains the speaker of the House and she has not been impeached because uh, the House didn't follow due process. Do you call yourself the speaker of the House now? Yes, uh, I'm the newly elected uh, speaker of an Ambrose House of Assembly. Uh, at the plenary uh, conducted yesterday that was decided over by Deputy uh, Speaker, Honorable, Right Honorable Harford, uh, Ikeju, uh, Osteja. Uh, you, the House uh, had in session 25 members present and sitting. Uh, uh, 
I moved, I was the one that moved the motion for calling for the impeachment of the speaker and was duly seconded after reading out all the resolutions and all the supporting uh, arguments. Uh, members voted in favor that she should vacate uh, as it has uh, speaker. Uh, and after that, the uh, election was conducted and I was uh, elected unanimously uh, by all the members without any dissenting voice. Remember, I say without any dissenting voice, because uh, when we say, when we, when we ask, when the presiding officer asks for those against my own, my own nomination, not even one person uh, altered the word. Honorable. So I was elected. Hello, yeah. Honorable. She said she remains the speaker because uh, the House couldn't form a quorum. And if you cannot form a quorum, according to the uh, the book of book, uh, uh, it's not possible. Uh, in our votes and proceeding of yesterday, which happens to be the first uh, sitting we had after our uh, short break, uh, the House was filled to uh, we had 25 members uh, present. She abdicated her responsibility. She was called to preside. He refused to preside and uh, instructed the clerk that the clerk should inform the deputy speaker to preside. So the deputy speaker, the clerk was there. The two deputy deputy clerks were there. Uh, Sergeant at arms, twenty-five members were there. But were you were, were you present at the house today? There was. Uh, we are joined to tomorrow. Where there was. Yes. We didn't have anything today. So I hope we will not get to meet drama tomorrow when you gather again uh, to, for another plenary. I, be, I believe by God's grace there won't be any drama. We are in the majority. Uh, those people, and some of them, uh, purporting to be on our own side, uh, uh, unfortunately, they are not with her. Uh, she's just doing drama. She called in some uh, uh, members of the public Okay, Honorable Kim, I'll just say you should hold on while we introduce uh, uh, one of us who is a journalist, is a pioneer head of uh, the political desk in one of the dailies, if I'm not mistaken. I have with me here Emmanuel Bello, is a journalist, a former commissioner in Taraba State. <laughs> Welcome to Democracy <laughs> Today. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm on this show, I'm comfortable with the, the, journalist. the, the, the journalist part with me, which is what <laughs> I'll be doing here. Yes, in, in your pol experience as a political uh, correspondent, this you have heard from both sides in Anambra State. The woman said the house couldn't form a quorum, uh, but uh, the, new the new speaker is also claiming that he remains the speaker. What do you think from this? Well, I don't want to even just zero in on the Anambra scenario. I mean, uh, there's a pattern yeah. to, to this kind of thing everywhere, whether it's in Benue recently or in some other states. Uh, it's, it's a crisis. And I think if we're going to widen this discussion so that everyone will be involved, not just people in Anambra state, uh, we have to look at the crisis of the legislative arm itself. The fact that uh, both at the level of how, first of all, some of them come in, into the uh, the Hualu chambers of the state assembly it's part of the crisis we just saw the u.s congress you know midterm elections where yes. congress people men were chosen look at that beautiful example you know people went out and campaigned vigorously and they got into these places now part of the crisis we have at the state levels in most cases especially at the legislative arm it's also the compromises you know that they've have been issue they have, uh, they've entered uh, before coming for some of them not every one of them can boast that look where our own men we came into this place you know because we went to the people they gave us votes in most cases you can trace their ascendancy and how they, they got into these places and they're never really proud of their independence they're never yes. really proud of the fact that they can do what they do so you find you find out that there's a systemic problem if we don't deal with that, all these are just offshoot of some of the crises we're having. You know, I'm sure Anambra has its own peculiar case. Benue probably. Ondo too. Yes, we'll be, we, we, we also will be talking with uh, uh, the two parties in Ondo 
on this show tonight. Exactly. Uh, so let's get to hear from them too. Yeah. Uh, so what what are you what do you think about uh, the way they just wake up in the morning? They they call for impeachment, like what happened in Benue State, and now we are seeing that in Anambra. Is there not so, are there not supposed to be a process for impeachment? There should be a process, but even I mean, this is the only part of the world you hear about. You know, the, in some in some democracies, especially the kind of democracies we're even trying to copy. The word impeachment is not something that you just use anymore. Any, I mean, you just use so loosely, and you just effect impeachment. Uh, in most cases, like you, you heard what the former, or if she's the former speaker now, was saying that look, there was no even quorum. And if you look at the history of democracy in this country, you find out that even uh, in, in one particular regime, I don't want to mention, uh, there was uh, something dangerous was introduced. Okay. Why people can actually without forming a quorum, and we know the magic number that happened, some people were even impeached, you know, in places where they're not supposed to be. A, a governor, that was, that, was, that was for the governor at the level of the governorship yes. in one particular state. We saw that example. It was as if that was what even gave back to all the other drama of impeachment. But if you go, go back to the House of Assembly, it's always, always very dramatic. Procedures okay. are not followed. And most importantly, and this is very important, apart from the procedure, what are the motives? And this the areas where you have a problem. Yes, that's Why where is the that's where pushed out? that's where that's where I will talk to the new speaker now. Honorable Winkem. Yes, my dear. When I went to my social media platform, I just posted something uh, there, and all I got is people saying that this whole impeachment thing in Anambra uh, has a has a motive, and it's, the motive is because some of you uh, didn't win your nomination in your party to run for election again. And some are not happy with uh, uh, this very particular Speaker of the House. Is that why you, people are threatening to impeach her or you have impeached her? Uh, we've impeached her, and uh, for, the, for the record, uh, this is the first time uh, they will try to uh, make a move to impeach her. So at uh, this last count, was successful. At the last count, there were actually seven members in support that she linked. But through the intervention of the governor, uh, governor pleaded, the uh, governor pleaded with us that we should allow her because of the election coming up last year. So because we are obedient and, and their number. So are you saying it was because of the governor that you didn't impeach her all this while? The governor is intruding into your legislative matters. Is that what you're telling us? No, no. At that point, uh, we are in a very tense political season. That was last year. You remember we had the governorship election last year. And the governor was of the opinion that if we impeach her, it would send the wrong signal to the voting public. So we said, okay, let's uh, leave her. Maybe she will turn a new leaf. But unfortunately, uh, her excesses uh, continue to swell in numbers. And uh, members uh, agreed in numbers that uh, her time is up. So what are, what are some of these excesses? So it, so it, what has, did, it has nothing to do with it has nothing to do with the primaries or whatever. Uh, some of the members that signed uh, her impeachment notice uh, are members that had to get to contest con uh, con 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 election in, in, in some parties. So okay, so what what are the uh, excesses? Let let's just have one or two of the excesses that you're talking about. Uh, Procedure. Uh, the House has not been able to meet consistently in the past uh, uh, six months. We've not met more than uh, 40 times. And it's very absurd. Uh, we have a backlog of uh, uh, bills, executive bills, um, uh, private member bills still hanging. And uh, the way Amana she conducts herself, she insults everybody, both members and um, staff. Uh, she uh, feels that, that uh, uh, being speaker is being like a, a, a god. All right. Uh, it's, not, it, uh, it's, not not as if, it's not as if it's not as if it has anything to do with the financial impropriety that a lot of papers are carrying. That that's one. Oh, you, oh, you no, no. That, that one is one of it. Uh, over time, uh, if you come to another state of assembly, you you feel sorry for the sorry state of uh, the assembly. It's on note. Yesterday, when members came, came in, most of our aid is very important. There is no water supply, and the monies have been uh, appropriated and allocated to the management to maintain all those special properties, those funds, to herself and to our office. All right, uh, Honorable. So we've, been, we've been advising her that you have to follow the process and make her assembly an institution, it should be, 
Okay, Honorable Inkem Uzozie, I want to say thank you uh, for being Ikem, a part Ikem, of Ikem, this. Ikem, Ikem, Ikem Uzozie, thank you very much for being a part of uh, the program. Hopefully, we will be talking with um, uh, the embattled speaker, but we called that this morning, and uh, the special uh, special media. Uh, aid to her said she won't be able to talk because she's been advised not to talk or go to the media. That's why uh, they advised us to get uh, a copy of uh, the press uh, press um, was it press briefing that she heard yesterday, which we just played before uh, we joined the new speaker. We'll be finding out more as this uh, issue develops. It's a developing issue. Tomorrow they are going to have another session at the House. So let's see if it's going to be another Anambra House of Commotion. Now, let's just move to Ondo State. Let's get to hear what happened in Ondo yesterday. Uh, no, uh, yeah, on Monday, yes, Friday, that was the impeachment. The impeachment was for Friday. Then on Monday, the same speaker tried to force himself. That's what is reported to take over plenary. And they, you, you can imagine what happened. They even went as far as threatening reporters not to re not to record anything but yesterday we played some of the visuals that we got from an own uh, uh, one of us who recorded with a telephone let's just hear from them the mess still remain with the speaker the this the mess that were constructed during baba jashin regime still remain with me and the symbol of the House of assembly is still with me yes the whole scenario? Uh -huh. Nothing like that. Is that impeachment? It's not impeachment. That's not impeachment. I still remain the speaker. That's the embattled speaker who says I still remain the speaker. Uh, we are going to join the new speaker via phone. He was supposed to be in the studio this evening, but he's just arrived in Abuja and could not make it to the studio. So we'll join him via phone to answer to this same speaker who says i still remain the speaker and we will be talking with the new deputy speaker let's just first of all uh try and look at what is happening a lot of them seems to have a relationship with uh, the governors yes again uh, if we're looking at the crisis holistically because again it's um if you look at it like we started saying there's a pattern of course there are peculiar cases although case might be peculiar from that of a number and everything but there's an underlining thing that runs through all of them which is, apart from their own internal crisis, you had the speaker there saying that uh, one of the reasons, apart from the, uh, what they call gross misconduct and the rest, that one of the things that they were angry with, the, the, the former speaker with, is that, you know, the way she treats them, you know, the, that she was rude or she was not, you know, there were... That's there were an allegation kind of, because, uh, 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 were you there? <laughs> well, exactly, I mean, that's what he's saying. But I'm telling you how sometimes some of these little, little things, but that's what you see, that's the small screen. There's the real issue, sometimes underlining, is the crisis they're having or the situations that most of them are having with the governor of their states. Hmm. In most cases, you see what he was saying. He actually let the card out of the bag when he said that the governor actually stopped them from doing something. You begin to ask yourself, what happened to the independence or what, what happened to the separations of powers that are supposed to exist at the state level? The fact that the legislative arm is supposed to be very, very independent hmm. of the executive. And when you go back to the executive, they'll tell you that, look, we don't know what's happening. In the <laughs> so it's a crisis. You, they will tell you outrightly that, look, we are not, we are not, we don't know what's going on there. It's none of our business. But in this same democracy, we've had situations where decisions like this are taken not within the chambers of the legislative and but oh. elsewhere. And and that's part of the problem. The problem is that you do not, if you have a legislative arm that is very independent, especially at the state level. I think at the federal level, they are making some attempt to be their own people to say, yeah. look, we can take this show. And you can see that interferences, you can talk much about it out here. But at the state level, it's almost uh, a, a, a crisis. And when you when you you know scratch this problem, the bottom line of this problem, you find out that it goes back. One of the, the, the other speaker, the the one that is coming from Anambra, actually say that the governor of his state asked them not to do not it. Not to do it. I mean, I, I mean, how 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 did that happen? It, that yep. is not supposed to happen. In what in the sacred books of our democracies, mm. the legislative army is supposed to be so independent, independent of uh, that kind of uh, yes. interference. You do not take those kind of things. And at one time, I think there was an effort to ensure that uh, part of the problem is funding because they get their funding straight from the, the, practically from the state government. So something was, they were trying to do that. In fact, a, a, a situation where the legislature would actually be independent of the, because if you cut off the funding 
or you rectify the funding, or you do some restructuring at the level of funding, where the legislative, um, especially at the state level, oh. can actually, you know, directly uh, get their fund. Probably, they will be able to enjoy some form of autonomy, some form of independence, so that they will not take decision like that speaker is saying that he was. They were stopped at one time from taking the decision that they finally took. Well, saying that implies that this current decision had the backing of the state governor because that's what he's implying. He's saying that at one time they stopped them. Is it that they now got the permission to do that? So these are part of the problem. One of the biggest things we need to be discussing is the independence of the legislative arm. And of course, how to make the legislative arm more viable so that rather than doing laws, most states, like you have the Ondo State example or Benue State example, you have a situation where people are not actually ready or being allowed to do what brought them there. And these are supposed to be the first set of people to represent the state. Long, even before the governor, because okay. they are directly, you know, related to the people. They represent the people in a very direct way. Okay, okay, they are supposed to actually take the crisis of the grassroots to this place. But when they get there, they, they don't. They just another, thing. another thing, Mr. Bello. Let's let's listen to uh, the the other press briefing or what happened in Ondo again. Yes, uh, the new speaker also spoke. We're supposed to join him. Like I said, is at the airport. He's just arriving Abuja and may not be able to join us in the studio. And uh, the deputy speaker who says uh, he will be joining us, we heard that he's having a meeting with the governor, just like you <laughs> said. So he's having a meeting with the governor. Cannot pick our call. Cannot talk to us. So let's listen to what ha he said yesterday, talking about the new speaker. There are a lot of undercovers going on in the house. These are reasons why members have to come together and change the leadership. In line with the rules of the House, two thirds have signed, 18 members signed the impeachment of the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker. It's a new dawn for us. We are not fighting the government. I belong to APC. I stand with my party. In the case of Ondo, our uh, correspondent told us today that uh, uh, what is happening on the State House of Assembly is not far from uh, the ticketing, just like I asked in Anambra. A lot of them are not happy. You heard one reporter ask them the question, uh, are you in any problem with your governor? He said, no. <laughs> That's to tell you that it's not too smooth with them in, in that state. Now we are hearing that um, uh, the embattled speaker and his deputy are having a meeting with the governor. You know, uh, again, to widen the scope of con this discussion, uh, I, I think the framers of the Constitution were envisaging a situation where both these arms, whether it's the judiciary or the executive, and the can work together, yeah. you know, harmoniously. Nothing yes. is wrong with having meetings with them. Nothing is wrong because part of the part of the crisis too in some other state is that you have, you know, the, the the House of Assembly pulling one way and the governor pulling the other way, and so the people suffer. There is that crisis. But well, so but, the, it, but when when the reporters are saying that what is happening in Ondo House of Assembly may not be far from the ticketing, the crisis of. Uh, uh, post-primary uh, ele election of the APC. Most of them didn't get their ticket to return. So, could be, could be. I mean, there are, again, th that's what you're saying. It's very far from the primary reason yes. why legislate. If you want to impeach a speaker, let us get to hear that you are impeaching a speaker because they were not effective, yes. they were not doing the work that they are supposed to do, they have not carried out the mandate of the people, they've not done all of that. But we don't hear any of that. You hear things like, you know, be, you know covered in what is called gross misconduct. And like I say, um, what you hear at the end of the day, like most of them are saying, which is the fact that all oh, they believe that uh, there's a problem of inconsistency and that uh, they, those people don't do what they ask them to. If you look at if those are what you call the smoke screen, the real thing in most cases are the altercations they are having first among themselves and of, of course the crisis they are having with the executive. That's what in most cases determine all that is happening in the house, and this, and this slows down everything. It slows down the legislative work they are supposed to do, the bills that they are supposed, uh, you know, the laws they are supposed to, to make. Into, yes. yes to look at and of course the bigger job of actually checking the excesses of the, 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 the executive. executive the other speaker is talking in a number for instance he's talking about the excesses of the of the speaker and that's why she's she's been removed but what they should be telling us and what most people actually uh, are looking forward to is to check the excesses of the executive that is what the legislative arm is there to to, 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 do. to act as a watchdog All to right. what the executive is doing but in most cases the tone they the the, the knives on, on each other and then, of course, sadly, it has been dictated elsewhere outside those chambers. Well, we, we were just hoping that one of those days uh, we will we'll see the independence of the three arms of government in Nigeria, whether at the state level or the federal level. When we have two democracy, 
very true democracy, but I'm not saying we don't have democracy in Nigeria anyway. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for being a part <laughs> of the program, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Bello. Uh, hopefully, we'll bring you back uh, where we have other wider information about this uh, impeachment saga because the stories coming from Anambra and Undo, they are just similar. The one impeached said, I'm still the speaker. The new speaker is saying, I'm still the speaker. That's what we are getting. Hopefully, we will have the new speaker live on the set from Undo. And uh, when we return on the program tomorrow by 7.30 p.m., remember to follow us on our Twitter handle at Democracy Today and also follow me on my handle at EJ Osamu. Until we return tomorrow, 7.30 p.m., good night.